We have things to do. And you know I don't like hiking. And besides, it's not even good weather for it. Weather? What are you talking about? It's sunny out. No, it's not. Yes, it is. It's bright out. The, no, there's not a sun in the damn sky. <sighs> okay, whatever. You don't see me coming out on a hot, sunny July day telling people it's overcast, do you? No, you're right. That doesn't make sense. No, it doesn't make any sense. And it doesn't make sense to be praising this nonsense. Okay, I think that's your opinion, right? You wouldn't say it's overcast if the sun's literally blaring in your face, right? I think that sunny is a pretty accurate description of how it feels right now. That's my opinion? How is that my opinion? Look around. Okay, you wouldn't say it's overcast if clouds just happen to roll by around 4 o'clock in the afternoon, right? No. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's 9.30 right now, and the weather guy said it's going to be nice out, so I'm feeling optimistic. Okay, with that logic, if that's how you feel, you literally could repurpose the word sunny to mean anything that you want just to forward your own argument. It doesn't even make sense, nor work. One day you're gonna tell your kids, hey kids, it's sunny, go outside. And they're gonna open the door and it's gonna be a fucking snowstorm. How are they gonna trust you after that event, huh? All right, let's not be so dramatic, okay? The English language is filled with double meanings. So for example, your stupidity is killing me right now is different than your knife is killing me. Or Monica, your girlfriend is sunny and your rainy is different than today's sunny and tomorrow's rainy, right? If you don't get the context, then you're just not getting it. Whatever. We have so much to do and we're fucking hiking. Why? I don't know. Because it's sunny? Fuck you. I'm walking back. Why have you been so uptight lately? Is there something bothering you about the premiere? No. And I'm not uptight. <laughs> yes, you are. And yes, there is. You've been stiff all week. You're delusional. Okay, you're the one with certain thoughts about things. What happens if you're the delusional one? Impossible, because I call it like I see it. Okay, then why can't other people call it how they see it? Because they don't. tomorrow. Monica said it was tomorrow. 11.30? Are you fucking kidding me? Oh, I fucking knew it too. Well, Monica said it was tomorrow. She's closer to it than I am. What? Where? No, I mean I... Where did I see her? August Bates have dies within the first 10 minutes? Like, what kind of message is that supposed to send? Isn't the film supposed to be about the aftermath of the crash and her partner's suicide? That seems heartfelt. I don't know. I mean, yeah, but I don't understand why it has to be so damn morbid. I, like, I read the first script and she just, like, moves to Italy, gets a new job or something, but then he got all serious with the rewrites and was talking about how death is greater than distance or something along those lines. It's just discursive, really. I don't know, maybe he has a point. One is a sort of purgatory or indecision or something, I guess, and the other is absolute. What's that supposed to mean? I mean, think about it. Death is absolute. It's the end. There's no disputing something like that. You only reconcile the death of a loved one. Distance isn't so cut and dry. 
Where do you get this shit from? Look, I just don't see this film or us going anywhere. Um, so it's my turn now, right? Oh, come on, Monica. Hey, Monica. What are you doing out tonight if I'll have a tomorrow? Uh, I'm pretty sure it's not till the day after tomorrow. Are you positive I could have sworn it was tomorrow? Pretty sure. Well, I guess I should tell the guys I need to stay out then. Uh, have you seen August? Him and David have been out all week. Yeah. Is he nervous about the premiere? Um, I guess. I think he's just kind of frustrated about how the script translated on screen. Oh, let's see. Well, it probably comes to the territory. Anyway, I'll see you at the premiere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was at the sub. I was at the sub. Well, I know you told me. But she's dating him. She's closer than I am. August and Dave have been gone all week. How would they have let me know? I'm on my way. Don't worry. Look, I know. I know. I know you told me. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. Oh, God damn it. All right, right, we'll talk when I get there. Okay. Well, well, I know why they're not here. Sounds like Monica got drunk, mixed up the dates, and then grapevined it to Tobias. I told him it was today. I don't know why he didn't just ask David or August. Seriously? But. There's no way Monica could have mixed it up. I mean, I talked to her yesterday, and besides, she's dating one of the writers. Well, one of them, anyway. Maybe she's doing this on purpose. I bet she isn't happy that David changed August's plot. I thought David was only directing. Well, David wrote the opening plot, or introduction, or whatever, and then August rewrote it when he took over as lead writer. Apparently, the theme is supposed to deal with uncertainty, and August's version was too obvious, and it's foreboding. Anyway, David convinced August that the first draft matched better with the themes. Sounds convoluted. Yeah, a bit. But it's their first project, so like, what do you expect? <laughs> You're always second-guessing me, man. I can't so much as speak a full sentence without you analyzing every word. Dude, you gotta stop fucking taking every critique as some kind of personal attack. Well, how would you feel if someone rewrote the introduction to your story? I mean, Christ. How does it change anything you wrote? Your plot is gold. But you wouldn't even, you wouldn't even budge on the thematic ending. And don't you think I knew what I was writing? say, but that's only half the story. Filming is like poetry. You don't read Robert Frost and know exactly what he's talking about. I mean, that's not even the point. When you read poetry, it's you're trying to get something for yourself. I was trying to make whatever that something was clear enough in your script. It was clear. I, I wrote it. You started with one motif, and then you ended with another one. It was discursive. Screw you, man. I knew what I was writing. Okay. And just, just because you didn't understand it, doesn't give you the right to cut it up. Okay, look, August, I thought you agreed with the changes. Yeah. I, I don't know. Well, I mean, wasn't that what you are trying to get across with the kid? That he was so embroiled in his situation that he didn't realize that he was tying a blindfold for himself. Yeah, character represented bias, anxiety, uncertainty. But what a better way to show that to, to, than to end where the story began. I told you that. No one would have been able to pick up on the ambivalence of the theme if the situation didn't demand it, okay? A character is not going to be 
flat if a loved one dies, right? And in a soluble situation, it makes an audience think about, hmm, like what, have, what would I have done in that situation? But when you're faced with an insoluble situation like death, that's completely different. Shit! Of all the days, all the days, okay. David, hey! Dude, I forgot my ticket. Can I still get in? Yeah, you paid, right? <laughs> okay, yeah. Yeah, that sounds good. Thank God. Okay, I'll, I'll see you in a minute, man. Stupid Tobias, Jesus. All right, let's get this lunch thing over with.